Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go Fiverr. And in this video, I want to talk about multiple handlers in our route. How can we understand the concept of having multiple handlers for the same endpoint? When a request comes in for a route that gets matched, how do multiple handlers actually work? And so we'll start by taking a look at the GoFiber documentation. So let's jump in. So here I am at the GoFiber documentation and I'm gonna click an app because it, that gives us a value that has several methods attached to it, the handlers. And then I'm gonna click on routing, uh, which shows the same set of methods um, that we have for um, our app to add a row. And as you can see, for any given um, method, HTTP method, we can specify a path and several handlers. So what does this really mean for us? Well, if we click on paths, you can see it says route paths combined with the request method define the endpoints at which requests can be made. So when we have a route, as we know, it's composed of the path, the HTTP method, and one or more handlers. So the HTTP method and the path is what we're gonna call an endpoint. You can think of it as something to which a request is sent. That's the endpoint. That's what's being exposed is the endpoint. And once the endpoint matches, once a request is sent and matches an endpoint, which is an HTTP method and a path, then the set of handlers are invoked. Okay, so now that we have that picture in our head, let's dig into this a little bit more. The first thing I wanna start with is endpoints. So imagine that I have a set of endpoints and I have corresponding handlers to those endpoints. So for example, if I have the get, HTTP method for the path slash items, that's an endpoint. It's a unique combination of the HTTP method and the path, that's an endpoint. That means a request can be sent and if it matches this method and that path, we're gonna say that oh, we hit that endpoint of our application. And then we can have one or more handlers defined. Now, Notice that the way the handlers are depicted here is that the intention would be that if you send a request to an endpoint, that one the handlers will be invoked one after the other. Well, it can be invoked in parallel. That wouldn't make any sense. That would lead to confusion. So it must be invoked one after the other. Let's continue by adding a few more endpoints and handlers to our application here. So we have a post that will allow us to create a new item. We have get item with that ID, which allows us to get a specific item. We have put that allows us to update a specific item, and then of course, delete. All right, good. And this is all within our application domain. What I mean by this is that the endpoint and the handlers is part of our application. Okay, I wanna focus now on the idea of a requests coming into our application. So let's think about the route that defined by the endpoint slash items as ID. Let's say a client were to send a get request slash item slash 42, that's the request. It's gonna get sent or match on the endpoint get slash items as ID. And then as you can see, it's gonna traverse through our handlers. And the idea is that our handler should do whatever it is that we have defined for them to, you know, for this endpoint. Hopefully the picture so far makes sense. I'm trying to illustrate what the documentation is saying and how you can understand what's going on. All right, so, so far we haven't seen anything that conflicts with the document. We have an endpoint, we can have multiple handlers for it. Now let's dive a little bit deeper. And so now I want to focus specifically on this endpoint and its handlers. 
And so we know that's going to be routed to the endpoint slash item slash, you know, parameter ID. So if we have this client who sends this request, it gets routed to our endpoint, then our two handlers there will get invoked one after the other. So what do those handlers look like? Well, one of them is called request logger. So hopefully that is clear enough that basically for every request that's sent to this endpoint, we want to lock some information about this request. So it's going to get the method, the path, and the ID in this case, and it's going to log those things. Now we know that our handler must return an error. It's there in the signature. So we can return an error because it's not an error to log some information, or we didn't have any problem logging our information, so it must be nil. So from our experience with handlers previously, we know that if you return nil from your handler, that goes back to the client as a 200 OK. That's what we saw in the previous video. What should our next handler get item by ID do? Our get item by ID handler constructs an item and returns it as JSON. So now we have two values that could potentially go to the user. We either have the first value, which is a nil, or we have the JSON value, or maybe a combination of both. So which one is it? Remember from the documentation for Fiber, it's saying that oh, you can have multiple handlers. So let's jump into the code and see if we actually put this in place, what do we get when we invoke um, our endpoint? So as usual, we'll copy our previous um, episode um, directory, which is episode five, we'll call it episode six. We'll change to our episode six directory, we'll start up our editor and we pretty much um, going to just stick with one example here. Let's get our example one running and then we can start modifying the code. So the first thing we want to do is modify our handler. So this looks very similar to what we would want to do for get items by ID. So I'm just going to rename our get all books handler to that. Um, our item doesn't have an age, so we can get rid of that. And the text, well, since it's a name of an item, we can just give it something silly, like widgets for Acme Corporation manufacturing everything. Now, um, that seems okay. We can get rid of the comment. We don't really need that anymore. That was just for guidance when we start talking about what handlers do. And then, of course, this is not a person, so it's an item. Now, when it comes to our path, now it's get and it's um, items and then a ID param. Okay. And we don't need the name anymore. Um, not here anyway. Okay. So that looks good. And everything should work fine with a single handler. But remember, we're trying to do multiple handlers. So let's write another handler. This one is going to be called request logger. As we've shown in the presentation, the method path and ID. So let's just say that that's what we're going to log. All right, so now the next thing, the only thing we left for us to do is to return nil because that's, yeah, again, we don't need to do anything else and it was an error to lock this information. So uh, let's return nil. And of course we need to import slog package from the log package, standard log package. And so that should be it in terms of defining our handler. Uh, now that we have our handler defined, we're going to add it to the list. And now we have the two handlers just in the order we, in, we think we want them to work, which is a request come in. The first thing to do is call a request logger, then call the get item by ID. And so let's go test this. Okay. And as we can see, when we send our request now for this item, what we get 200. Okay. We do not see the second handler being called and we did not get an error or anything from fiber on a lock telling us that, Hey, there are more handlers defined for this endpoint. And by the way, only one of them was called or not all of them were called. So what is happening? Well, we kind of suspected that this would happen. If we say return and return nil or return anything, that should go back to the client. And once we do that, that completes that request. And so Fiber will not continue by calling the other handlers. What we really need to do is tell Fiber that what we want you to do is return the error from the next handler. 
So there's a convenient and easy way of doing this by calling c.next. And so now this basically says, well, I'm finished. I don't see an issue to return to the client right now, but rather I'll delegate to the next handler and whatever their value is in terms of their result, I'm going to return that. And so now we can call the next handler. Now, once we run our code, we'll see that, yes, we love the response and we also get the book. So this is how we would do it. Now, let's just add another handler for kicks and giggles. And this handler, we're going to call it add request ID. And the idea is that for every new request we get, we want to add a unique ID as a header to that request, to the request header. So that's the first thing we should do. As soon as we get a request, we add a new ID. And you can imagine this can be used that by any following re handler to be able to keep track of things, right? Like maybe we're going to call out to another service. And so we want to be able to track that this request resulted in this call on that service. So by having a request ID, we could pass it on to the other services to say, oh, you are handling this particular request. And so it can be used for tracing. And we're not going to talk much about that, but just trust me. So how do we get a unique ID? We will use GUID, right? There's global unique ID um, package. And we'll use this one for Microsoft. And we'll say, hey, and give me a new GUID and turn it into a string. So, so the thing to do is to create a GUID and get it as a string. For a GUID, let's import this GUID package from Microsoft. Okay, with this in place, now we can add this new handler to our route. And once again, we want it to run first, followed by our logger, followed by the final um, get item by ID handler. And so the first two handlers must call next. Otherwise, as we've seen before, it wouldn't propagate. So now let's um, also retrieve the request ID that we added in the previous handler in our log request, right? I mean, this guy is supposed to be logging the request. So we're going to log some information. And here we're going to log the request ID. Um, now, this handler doesn't know that though it was the previous handler that stuck it in there. It could have come easily come from the user. All right, so let's do a test and we can see when we make a request, we do get a ID. Let's call our input a few more times to demonstrate that yes, indeed, we are getting unique values for every request. And that makes sense. We're calling the GUID um, method um, package, which calling a new function in the GUID package, and that's giving us a new request. And so we have a way now of propagating this request throughout our system, even calling additional microservices and just passing on that ID and then being able to trace and then being able to trace which request resulted in which call and all this other stuff. Okay, so what we have done by having our handler call next is a special type of handler call a middleware. And if we go back to the fiber documentation and click on middleware, we'll see that there are a number of middlewares that they already provide for us, including a logger and a request ID middleware. And we'll get to see how to use the provided, some of the provided middleware from fiber. So we don't have to write ones that are so common. So with that said, I think this is enough. Um, basically, what we've demonstrated is that if you want to use multiple handlers, all except the last one should be a middleware, which means it should call C that next. It should not return to the user unless it intends to terminate that request. All right. So if you've made it this far and you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, I hope you like the material so far. If you have issues or concern, please drop me a line in the comments below. Um, if you like what you see, also leave a comment, thumbs up the video. For my returning subscriber, thank you so much. For my returning subscribers, thank you so much. I appreciate the time and patience and the support. And before I get out of here, as usual, I'll ask you if you can support the channel. There are a number of ways to do that through Patreon, PayPal, whatever. But recently I've been asking people if you or anyone you know 
want anything from Tesla, including a test drive or a Tesla vehicle or buying some swag from Tesla or Tesla Solar or anything like that, um, it doesn't have to be a vehicle. You can use my Tesla referral code and you get a discount and I get a discount. Or if somebody you know, they get a discount. Just ask them to use my Tesla referral code. All right, take care, stay safe, bye.